Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze, if you're new to this channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for clicking on my videos. And if you're a returning watcher, you are watching, but you're not subscribing. It's not fair. It's not fair. Just know that God is watching you and I am watching you. <laughs> but please, if you watch my videos and you like my videos, please subscribe, okay? I'm not even talking to people that are just seeing me for the first time. If you know that anytime my video comes up, you know, it somehow pops up on your page and you watch it. Just click the subscribe button, please. Thank you. <laughs> so today's video is actually a Q&A and I asked you guys on Instagram and on YouTube community to ask me questions concerning parenting, my pregnancy and childcare in general, okay? I don't think I've had a specific Q&A on all these topics. So yeah, that's what this video is going to be about. So if you'd like to know the answers to your questions and if you'd like to know the questions that people ask and the answers to their questions, then just keep on watching. So guys, in order not to make this video too long, I'm just going to be reading the questions and the answers. I might not be calling out names, you know, because it would make it, you know, become longer. Anyway, so the first question is, how did you tell the girls about their baby sister? Okay, so um, I told them about my pregnancy, but I didn't tell them about the gender until after the gender reveal, okay? But before the gender reveal, I used to ask them, um, what gender do you think this baby is going to be? Is it a boy or a girl? Cora kept saying girl from day one. Ava was always saying boy, girl, boy and girl, boy or girl. <laughs> like she never really had a specific answer. I'm sure because she's not old enough to really understand. But Cora kept saying she, she wants a girl, she wants another sister, she wants them to be three sisters, this and that. So yeah, somehow, in fact, even when I told her after the gender review that yes, I'm having a girl, I'm sure to her, she was just like, I already knew. Like <laughs> she felt maybe she thought is I don't know, maybe she just thought whatever she says is what is going to come out <laughs> anyway. Alright, so the next question is, how do you feel about having a third girl? You guys, I have gotten a lot of these questions on this Q&A on my channel that is in my comment section. You know, in real life, people keep asking me how do you feel about having a girl, another girl, another girl. Like, I'm just, in fact, let me just get this question out of the way, okay? Now, how do I feel about having another girl? I feel... I don't know. I don't feel. I don't feel. I don't know. I feel normal. I don't know how to explain it. I feel normal. I don't know how I'm supposed to be feeling, but I feel like I'm having another child. So I feel normal, like I'm having another child. It's not even about the gender. See, let me just say something, and I've said this in in so many words, in so many videos, but it's like people don't get it. A lot of people still. People, maybe people think I'm pretending, or they think that I'm just not saying the truth, or they are surprised that I don't feel the way they think I should feel. I don't know what the thing is, but a lot of people keep, you know, making me defend this baby's gender. Like, like I, like I should say I'm sad or like I should feel sad about it. I don't, and I'm not saying that what the person is saying, but I'm just saying it's what I've gotten a lot. Like, there's some, there's some comments I've just deleted straight up because it was just downright rude. Like, to me, I feel like you're just being, you know, insultive. Anyway, I feel normal. I feel like I'm having another child. Like, I don't know how else to feel. I've not had a male child before, so I don't know how to feel about having a male or a female or this one. I don't, I just feel like someone who is expecting a baby, okay? Yes, initially, when I first got pregnant, I wasn't happy. It's not because of anything. It was just because I was not planning to have a baby at this time. I was not planning to get pregnant ever again. I was, yes, I said I was going to adopt a child and I was planning to adopt a child when my kids are in um primary school like senior primary like maybe primary five or maybe junior second junior kind of thing that's when i was planning that okay i was going to adopt another baby at that time because i feel like i would have been mentally prepared and you know physically prepared to have another child not even to be pregnant but to adopt a child and bring a child into this house to take care of okay so yes when i found out i was pregnant i wasn't the happiest of persons i was like what is all this <laughs> because i didn't have control over it like I, I, it's not like I don't want another child, but I wanted to control it anyway. So all I'm saying is that since I have gotten past that, you know, um, and not anger, but that sadness of, oh, you're pregnant again, you didn't plan it, this, not, this was not the plan. Since I've gotten past that, every other thing to me is just like, I'm having another child, I'm having another child. It's not even about gender now. Like, what my main issue was, I, I didn't want to have another child at this time. But since I'm having another child at this time, then to me, gender, when it comes to babies, gender is the least thing. Okay, um, something happens in my life. I don't know what it is, but I had to open the windows to just use natural light. I hope you guys can see me clearly. Okay, so the next question is, what do you use for your daughter's hair? Their hair is always so luscious. Thank you. 
Um, I use a range of products, but to be honest, um, people have asked me about their hair care routine. I'm going to do a hair care routine video. I'm sorry, guys. I know I've said it for a very long time that I'm going to do it, but so many things kept coming up. But I am going to do a hair care routine for my kids, um, a video on it. But one thing I'm going to tell you, it is not about the products. Yeah, good products are good, but it's not about the products. It's about having a routine, sticking to your routine, and being very careful with that. In fact, it's the, it's the work you put behind it that is, that is the issue. It's not the hair product. So if you're one of those people that you, you, just, you don't have the patience to take care of your children's hair, but you want to buy all the expensive products, it's going to end in tears, both for you and your daughter, because she's going to be crying while you're making her hair. So yeah, it's not about the products. Even though, yes, I'll tell you the products I use specifically in that video. But it's not about the products, it's about the discipline and the dedication to, to growing their hair and taking care of their hair, okay? Yeah, so the next question is, what position exactly did you get... What position exactly did you do to get pregnant? Give us gist, how it take happen? You people know who asked this question. <laughs> yes, it's the position you, you told us in your own video that I, that I use. I'm sure everybody knows who asked this question. It's that position that she, she told us about, that's the position that I use. Anyway, the next question is, how do you feed your kids? What do you feed your kids with daily? In one of my videos, I showed you guys their food timetable. Basically, what my kids eat is rice, beans, potatoes, plantain, soup, eba. Yeah, rice, beans, potato, plantain, soup, eba, bread, then cereal sometimes, yeah. Cereal, pap, custard, rice, beans, eba, <laughs> potato bread uh, they don't really have so many options but what i do is that any food i'm cooking for them i cook it with extra love and care i try to add as much um, ingredients as they can tolerate so they can get as much as many nutrients as possible in each meal so if i'm cooking rice for them i add fish to the rice i add crayfish i add uh, you know coconut oil or stuff like that just so that they can get enough nutrients in just basic rice um, if i'm cooking beans for them in fact their beans is orishi rishi i add fish i add plantain potatoes um, um crayfish lots of crayfish and stuff like that so that their beans will be you know you know it have a lot of nutrients so then their soup the same thing i try to cook um their best soup is okra soup so i cook okra for them a lot and i add a lot of orishi rishi to it again like i said so um that's basically what my kids eat daily uh someone has asked me whether my kids don't eat noodles my kids eat noodles but once in a very long time i don't for me noodles is not food so i give them noodles as a filler like for instance if they've had lunch and before dinner they're complaining that they're hungry and don't have any snacks at home and i just want to give them something sharp, sharp to eat i give them noodles but it's not in their timetable it's not we don't i don't regard noodles as a meal in fact i cook one for two of them to share that's how little i give them so yeah um so they eat noodles but i could actually garnish the noodles very well and other about it. so to be honest i'm not a fan of noodles best personally so um they eat it but it's not often um how is eva and cora's okay how was eva's eva and cora's reaction to your pregnancy are they excited yes they are very excited in fact yeah if i want to blackmail them <laughs> If I want to blackmail them, I'll say, you put not have carrying a baby. You see, you see, you're, you're making noise. The baby is not the baby is not comfortable. Your noise is disturbing the baby. They will say, Oh, sorry, mommy. They will not keep quiet. So I use the baby to blackmail them because they are very excited about the baby. They are very, you know, they can't wait for, for the for the baby to come. Actually, Cora, for Eva, she used to forget. She used to forget. Sometimes she'll jump on my body, jump on the baby. And I'll scream and she'll tell me, sorry, mommy. I'll not jump again, but tomorrow she will still jump. So for Eva, she forgets, but for Cora, she's very, very uh, gentle with me because of the baby okay so the next question is how does it feel being pregnant with kids okay so for me um being pregnant with kids i think the difference is that i am focused more on my kids than on being pregnant sometimes because i have kids it makes me more stressed out but let me just say i focus more on my kids than being pregnant because i i mean i have two living kids that are looking in front of me they are demanding from me so sometimes i forget that i'm even pregnant that's just the truth sometimes i forget sometimes i carry eva up before i remember that i have a belly to protect um you know so i think that's the difference between being pregnant without kids okay with kids you for me i tend to forget that i'm pregnant and i focus more on them like my mind is not on the pregnancy so that's why even till now i've never bought anything for the baby or like when i was pregnant with just cora i didn't have ever then <laughs> by now nursery was already set up okay <laughs> nursery was already set up i'm talking about 20 weeks and stuff like that the nursery was already set up so yeah the light is back on but yeah now it's close the windows again i hope it's not too bright all right so the next question is what skincare products 
the Zucora and Eva use? Okay, for Cora and Eva, when they were younger, I was using Chico products for them, um, bath foam, cream. Well, I didn't not say cream. I used the cream for them sometimes, but right from when they were really, really young, I was already using shea butter for them. It works very well for their skin, so and it's cheaper. So, <laughs> so I was using shea butter for a very long time for them. Um, but when they were little, little tiny babies, I used Chico simply because I wanted them to have that baby smell finish. But once that first, once their the first body cream they have finishes, I switched to shea butter for my kids. So. Yeah, they use shea, even till now they still use shea butter all over their body. Not even whips, not even nuts, just pure plain, you know, good old shea butter. What I use for their body for as cream, um, for soap. When they were young guys, used chico bath foam till they turn to they turn two years or even almost three years. But after that, I stopped using it for Cora. I stopped using chico like after she turned three years. I started using normal. Um, any baby bath soap I see, okay? But for Eva, I think because she, she met her sister using bath soap, so the moment she turned one year plus or so, I started using, before she turned two anyway, I started using normal bath soap for her as well. Um, the one I like now is Peekaboo, that's the name of the, the brand, I don't know. It's called Peekaboo, it's a bath soap I buy it from Next. I love the smell so much. So that's their bath soap. What else did they use again? And then that's their body cream. Okay, so the next question is not being judgmental as I have three girls as well. But would you have wished for the third baby to be a boy? Yes, I would have wished for this baby to be a boy. I mean, I have two girls already, so it's not like I'm looking for a girl. <laughs> like, I would have really, really loved this baby was a boy. But at the same time, like I said, um, it's not a priority for me on the list. See, if gender of your child is a priority for you, Eh, in having children then you've already failed that child before the child came out because like i keep saying the gender in fact you know when it comes to i was telling somebody during my baby shower that when it comes to raising kids the agenda and money to raise my kids is not my problem like i know that at last worst case scenario i go hustle like is it not like <laughs> we already know the the formula to wealth okay if you hustle very well if you work really hard you are going to make money so you know money to raise my kids is not my problem my problem is giving them the time and attention and the you know mindfulness that is required to raise a child well actually to raise a godly child it's not it's not a a, a a walk in the park doing that okay actually in the society that we live in right now it's not a walk in the park you know so my main issue with having more children why i do not want to have more children even i'm not ready is simply because it takes a lot of it takes a lot from you to actually raise a child in a godly manner. So the more children you have, the more it takes from you, okay? Um, yeah, so the next question is, how are you coping with the heightened sense of smell? Initially, it was terrible for me. I'm not even going to lie. Even till now, I still have heightened sense of smell, even though it has reduced drastically from the first um, trimester. But I just deal with it. I don't have any choice. I avoid, you know, some things. I, I, I like to, today I can't still wash my clothes with um, fabric softener, the smell drives me nuts. I don't like any harsh smells around me, so I just try to cope with it. Sometimes when my children come and hug me, I'm just like, <laughs> especially if their hair is smelly. <laughs> I'm just like, and not, when I say smell, it's not like it's smelling so bad because other people might not even smell it, but because it's me and my, my sense of smell is heightened, sometimes when I hug my children, I'm just like, can you just go please? But I mean, I can't show that to them, so yeah. Um, I just I just deal with it. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's not something you can you can't you can't will it away. So I just try to prevent, you know, things that I know are triggers. I just try to prevent going near them or even, you know, prevent using them at all. Okay, so the next one is do mental candies and ginger really relieve nausea? Ginger works a bit, but to be honest, when you're in the height of you know that nausea phase, especially in first trimester, ginger doesn't really do so much, neither does um mentor candies but they actually help like for, for for me for a while i was leaving um ginger in my tongue like in my mouth i'll put ginger i just cut a piece of ginger and put it under my tongue you know it helps it helps but it's not going to stop the nausea <laughs> it helps in fact after i put it all day at night i was still vomit but at least i, I could i was able to you know, tolerate the nausea throughout the day because of it. So the next question is, after marriage, did you think about waiting a year or two before you start having kids? No, well, somehow, 
I didn't prevent pregnancy in the first year, but I wasn't really eager to get pregnant in the first year, okay? So yeah, I didn't prevent it, but I wasn't really eager to get pregnant. And then when six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, ten months started going and I did not get pregnant, I was just like, okay, <laughs> something is off somewhere. So, but yeah, I didn't actively say I will not have kids in the first year, but at the same time, I wasn't planning to get pregnant. I wasn't even hoping to preg get pregnant. The next question is, what mode of contraceptive will you consider since you had issues with IUD? You guys, I've done a video about this. I'm considering time in my womb and the more time is going, the more I'm thinking of it. And that reminds me, a lot of people think that I did that video to deceive people. I'm just like, how does that even make sense? I said I was going to time my womb, but I didn't tell you I was going to time my womb tomorrow. I didn't say I'm going, or I didn't do a video of how I am going to go and time my womb. I just told you guys what I was considering doing and why I was considering it. And to be honest, that video, I made it the next day after I had done my consultation with my doctor. The very next day, I sat down and made the video. Like, yes, I actually sat down with my doctor and talked about it, and she's the one that gave me the options, which I came here to tell you guys. So, I don't know how people think. Yes, I was pregnant then when I did it, but in fact, it's because I was pregnant that I was really considering that I need to tie this one, okay? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so it was the next day after I um, had that appointment with my doctor, that was when I came and made that video. So, I didn't make the video trying to deceive people that I'm not pregnant or anything, like, it doesn't even make sense because I didn't tell you guys watch me go and time my womb but that's not what I said I said I am going to time my womb and I told you guys it's what I'm considering I already have a date for doing it and the date for doing it is when I give birth if I give birth two years and I have to do it immediately if I don't give birth two years I'll do it two days after within 72 hours after giving birth vaginally that's when you can do it so yeah, if you're that kind of person, I feel like I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not going to come on YouTube here and try to deceive anybody or try to lie or whatever. Like, it, it's not worth it. So I'm forgetting a lot of compliments which I've been skipping, and I feel bad for skipping them. But thank you guys so much for all your compliments. I'm so grateful. I like, I'm, I'm, you guys are just, you know, you're making my head swell here, okay? But I'm just skipping them because if I have to read all of them, it's going to make this video too long, okay? I hope you guys understand. But thank you very much. Okay, so the next question is, what advice can you give to someone waiting to conceive? Yes, I'm going to make a video about this one because I've gotten the questions a lot. In fact, I had a video like this drafted after I made my first infertility video. But to be honest, to come out and make that video has been... I don't know why I have, I have been dragging feet in making that video. But yeah, I'm going to make a video about what to do while you wait and stuff like that, okay? So, I'll answer that in another video. Did you ever get scared of putting on a lot of weight? I'm a size 16 and I get scared. I'm actually a size 18 at this point, I'll be a size 20 self. To be honest, while I am pregnant, that's if I, if that was you're asking, while I am pregnant, I am not scared of putting on weight. In fact, pregnancy is the only time in my entire life where I eat whatever I want to eat, however I want to eat it, at whatever time I want to eat it. Pregnancy is the only time in my entire life that I eat guilt-free, okay? So, <laughs> during pregnancy, bring it on, especially after by my first trimester of, you know, having food aversions. Right now, I eat anyhow, I eat very, very, anyhow, anything I want to eat, I eat at any time of the day. If I wake up at 2 a.m. and I feel like eating a bar, I'm going to eat it <laughs> because pregnancy is the only time where I know that I don't have much to lose by doing that. After, when I give birth, we'll think about losing the weight. Mm, we'll think about it. Even breastfeeding, well, with breastfeeding, I'm more cautious of, of breastfeeding simply because I need my breast milk to flow and you know all that so i don't really i eat i, I eat intentionally while breastfeeding but at the same time i don't i'm not trying to to look for shape or whatever it's very well but yeah i don't think it's something that you should be scared of just know that it is your body and you have control over your body if you want to lose weight you will lose the weight if you if you're determined to lose weight you'll lose it if you're determined not to add weight you're not going to add weight okay so you have to have that mindset that you are the one in control of your body Things don't just happen to you. When I see people that say things like, I don't eat, but I add weight. Woo! Woo! Lies, girl. Lies you tell yourself. <laughs> you, you might not be, you might not. Like I see people saying things like, oh, some people will be so slim, they eat a lot, but they don't add weight. I've not seen any very slim person that eats so much. That's just the truth. Some of them eat so much in one sitting, and that's all to the next meal but you that you are watching weight or you that you feel like you are, you are too big you eat small for lunch then eat post lunch eat pre dinner eat post dinner eat pre uh, pre, pre breakfast mm, you are deceiving yourself so um <laughs> yeah just so that you have control over what happens with your body that's just what I'm, i have to say okay someone is asking me how far gone were you when you discovered you were pregnant i was basically Four weeks. I was four weeks. Like I found out I was pregnant two days after my period. 
should have come. Like I missed, two days after I missed my period or something, I found out I was pregnant. Okay, so the next question is, how did you feel when you discovered you were carrying a girl? Um, I was a little bit indifferent, simply because right from the beginning of this pregnancy, I had a very, very strong feeling that I was going to have another girl. Right from the beginning of the pregnancy, right from the first day I found out I was pregnant, I had this very, very strong, overwhelming feeling that I was going to have a baby girl. And personally, for me, I don't believe that you can fit, you can fit, fit a change in your child's gender. You can't fit it, okay? If you can fit it, you might as well go and fit a change in your in your existing child's gender. I might as well go and pray that Eva turns into a boy today, okay? I don't believe you can you can have faith to change your child's gender after you have gotten pregnant. Before you get pregnant, yes, you can pray and hope and, you know, have faith that you have a boy or a girl, but the moment you get pregnant, the child is already formed. The, the God has already chosen the boy or the girl that is entering your belly. And once the child has entered, you cannot, I don't believe that you can change the gender of that child after conception. So the moment I had that overwhelming feeling that I was going to have a girl, I already made up my mind I was going to have a girl. So when, it, when the doctor told me it's going to be a girl, blah, 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 blah. I was just indifferent because I already felt I was going to have a girl, okay? You guys, the lighting in this video is going to just be off, up and down, off and on, even the sound, but just bear with me, it's Nigeria, oh, sorry. Okay, so the next question is, do you have any pressure from your parents-in-laws not having a boy? And do you believe that girl children should have inheritance in their father's house? Okay, so for parents-in-laws, I have only my mother-in-law alive and she has never asked me one day about boy or not boy. In fact, <laughs> I don't know, when I hear people say things like my, my, my in-law now said this, I'm like, I can't relate. My in-laws mind their business so well, <laughs> okay, so, so well. Even my husband kind of person that minds his business, so you can't come and enter his business when he minds his business very well. So my parents, in -law, my mother-in-law has never ever asked me anything about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I don't feel any pressure whatsoever. Um, we don't even talk about my pregnancy until after I give birth. When I give birth, oh, you yeah, have something like that. But while I'm pregnant, we don't even talk about my pregnancy at all. So there's no pressure whatsoever. Um, the other one is, do you do you believe that girl children should have inheritance in their father's house? Um, yes, they should have inheritance in their father's house. But at the same time, I'm not a big believer in inheritance. I don't know. Like, I'm not expecting anything from my father now. God forbid, not to happen to my, my father. He's going to live forever, okay? He's going to live forever. But I don't expect him to come and give me land in the village or give me... I don't, I don't expect it. So, for me, because I have that mindset, I really don't care. Mom has raised the child well enough to be independent and, you know, do things for themselves and have their own wealth for themselves, okay? Once that happens, you will not really be interested in father's land or no father's land or inheritance in house or no house or whatever. Anything they get from you, they're going to appreciate it as extra, but they're not going to depend on it. So, and I'm talking about both boy and girl, so I'm not even a big believer of, oh, you are the first son, you're going to inherit everything, so you need to relax and enjoy yourself, no? I believe that you should give your children the best in life so that they can and that's why we're not we're not really into buying of land buying of property if we're buying any property today is to invest it because of the money we're not investing to to pass it on to our kids because i'm determined to give my kids the best in life the best education the best you know the best life the best exposure that i can give them so that they can make this work do you think dangote now cares about his father's village do you think so <laughs> or do you think Otedalo cares about his father's village Okay, the way the world is moving right now, I, I'm sorry, I, before people think that I'm, I'm anti-culture or I'm not, I'm not a true Igbo woman, I'm sorry. But the way the world is moving right now, if I wanted a, a land in my father's, let's say I'm not entitled to get any inheritance, but I want a land in maybe my, in my father's village so I can build a house there or have a school there or help children there. It's about the money. If I carry one billion and I enter my father's village, I can buy even all the neighbor's lands and <laughs> buy your own grandfather's land, Joy. Okay? So, so, so yeah, that's how I see that's how I see life. So, um, if you're a woman out there, yes, you can fight for it because it's your right or whatever, it's not your right. But for me, it's not, it's not I, I don't think about it. My husband doesn't even think about it. We don't even know my husband's, whether he has it. We don't care. Nobody cares in this house, yeah. Having seen your video about gender review, would you honestly get pregnant again just to have a male child? Hell no. No to the O. <laughs> N to the O. There is no way I will go and intentionally go and get pregnant because I want a male child. Never, ever, ever. See, 
I don't want to sound somehow because I mean I, I love this baby so much and I'm really grateful that God gave me a miracle baby and all that, okay? But I'm not one of those women who likes being pregnant. I don't know. Some I've heard women say, oh, I like being pregnant. I like the feeling of being pregnant. I like how I'm being treated when I'm pregnant. I like how, you know, my husband acts around when I'm pregnant. I really don't care about all those. I don't care. I don't want, I don't like being pregnant, okay? I'm the kind of person that I like to have complete control of my body that's why i don't even drink i don't like alcohol too because i'd like to have a hundred percent control of my body and when you are pregnant nothing like that there is worse than even alcohol alcohol in two days is my clear from your head or even in one day or in a few hours it's clear but with pregnancy you have nine whole freaking months and then after that nine months you have a, some months too that baby still attached to you breastfeeding after that you still have some years where baby still attached to you okay so <laughs> So, I'm not one of those people who likes being pregnant, um, so I cannot, never will I go and intentionally go and get pregnant because I want to have a male child. Like it, like I said, if, if gender is at the forefront in why you're having children, you've already feel that child even before the child is out. So the next question is, how did your husband act when you told him you were having a girl? My husband acted as normal as anybody can act. He he doesn't he's not kind of, he's not a kind of person that has much of a reaction to anything. So he was just like, okay. And that was it. I'm say adding things to cut to buy for the baby. So that was it. So the next question is: do you have plans for an epidural or you would prefer to bear the pain all through? Do you have an idea the average cost of an epidural shot in Nigerian hospital at the moment, especially now that things are expensive? I've never had an epidural, it has never been an option. Yeah, uh, uh, it's not something I even consider because it's never been an option for me. Even though the hospital I used for the, my first two pregnancies, they don't encourage it though, but you can ask and they will give you. You can insist on it and they will give you. But they don't encourage it. But it's, not, it's not something I really thought about. Like, I don't know, it's only when I see people online talking about epidural, I'm like, oh, that's a thing. But uh, it has never been a thing for me in my pregnancies of um, I, I'm trying to avoid the pain or whatever. I don't know. It's not like, um, and it's not a case of, I want to feel like a real woman, so I, I want to bear the pain, so that I feel like I, it's not, <laughs> it's not a case of that, I'm actually a very lazy person, when it comes, I don't like pain, so when it comes to that, I, I really don't care, but it's just that it's never, it has never been an option for me, because I never made it an option, let me just put it that way, that's just Tisha, but yeah, <laughs> the next question is, do you have stretch marks due to your pregnancy or previous pregnancies, and if not, did you use anything special? um yes i had pregnant i had stretch marks in my first pregnancy that was with cora with eva i think i got a little more with this baby i'm getting stretch marks on my arms which is it's, it's the most annoying because it's even black those black ugly stretch marks i'm getting them on my arms here and here um but the truth is that i never used anything special i never even tried to use anything special i don't know i'm not one of those women who are so vain or not i won't call it vanity but women that are so particular about i don't want stretch marks i don't want this i don't i don't care like it doesn't change anything it's not like i used to wear chobele before that oh it's not allow me wear chobele again i don't wear chobele i hardly wear sleeveless things and if i want to wear sleeveless things i'm going to wear it if the stretch mark is bothering you you close your eyes okay it's going to bother you more than it's going to bother me so I really don't care about stretch marks. I don't try to use anything on it. I don't even rub cream. When I see women who sit down and oil their bellies, they use this, they use that to oil their bellies, it, it, it itches me just watching. <laughs> I feel sweaty just watching them doing that, okay? So no, I don't use anything. Oh, so this next question is asking, how does it feel to have a baby bump? She's asking because she's never had one. Don't worry, you have one when you want to in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yes, and it actually made me smile. Um, how does it feel having a baby bump? Sometimes I feel like I've overeaten. Sometimes I feel bloated. Sometimes I forget that I have a bump. Like I, for I literally forget that I have a baby. Like I forget. And then sometimes it feels so magical. Especially when the baby's moving, when the baby's kicking. It feels like I don't know how to explain it. It's like, ah. I wish every woman who wants to get pregnant will get pregnant. Like, I just wish it. It's my prayer for every woman out there who wants to get pregnant. I pray you get pregnant. I pray you have your babies. I pray you experience what it's like to feel your baby kick and move inside you, okay? So, at times like that, it is so magical. I can't explain it. Um, yeah, but majority of the times, I just feel like someone who overeats or sometimes I even forget. I don't feel anything at all. Okay, so the last person I'm going to take today. Ha! Huh? Questions were so many. The last question is, how does it feel knowing you are expecting a new member in the family? Oh, some days I'm like, 
I've not done anything. I've not done anything. I need to do stuff. I need to do stuff. A child is coming. A child is coming. And then other days I'm like, I beg. When the baby comes, we'll, we'll make it work. Somehow, somehow, we're going to make it work, okay? So, yeah, I battle. I go in between those two feelings. Feeling of, oh my God, a new child is coming to this house. We're going to have a baby in this house very soon. The house is too dirty. The, uh, this one is too dark. I've not bought anything. I start freaking out, okay? While other days, which is what happens most times, I'm like, we'll be fine, I beg. People used to give birth under the bridge and their children still, still do very well. So, it's not me that's going to come and panic. Okay, when the baby comes, the baby comes. Okay, if we don't have clothes for the baby, on our way to go and give birth, we'll branch at the supermarket and go and get onesies for the baby and then get to the hospital. Okay, so we're going to be fine. So, those are the two feelings that I juggle most times when I think about this baby. Like, is it that I'm freaking out or I'm extra, extra, extra relaxed, like too relaxed for someone who is having a child? All right, so yeah, that brings me to the end of this video. So, like I said, I'm going to do a part two of this video where I answer the parenting and child the parenting part of this um, q and a if not this video is going to be too long right now i'm already talking too fast because i'm tired so after time i'm talking too fast but yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys